morning, South Florida, and welcome to this edition of UM's Frost Jazz Hour right here on WDNA's 88.9 FM, the home of Sirius Jazz. I'm your host, Marcello Corelli, and uh, very excited to present to you all um, a debut performance of the Eric Stern Trio. Um, this includes Eric Stern on piano, Blake Aldridge on the bass, and Henry Moore on the drums, and they're going to have a great program for you all to uh, listen to in your car or at home or on the stream. Um, you know, our upcoming performances, we will have the Philip Capuzzi trio and then Brian Dubrow the week after and then Russ Spiegel. So stick around for those. But, you know, in the meantime, enjoy this great music. I'm really looking forward to hearing these guys. So without any further introduction, the Eric Stern trio. No, I'll just go ahead and play. Thank you. 
Yeah. I was killing. For those of you that don't know, that was a uh, Chick Corea tune entitled Tones for Jones Bones. You're listening to the Eric Stern Trio right here on WDNA's 88.9 FM, the home of serious jazz. How's it going, man? How's it going, Eric? It's good, man. Thanks uh, thanks for having us and being such a great host. So, oh, yeah. My pleasure. It's great to have new groups coming on the show, you know, all the time. Um, it's been a fun semester. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this is, this is the first time that you, that you guys are on the show. How's it feel? Feels good. You know, it's nice to be here. Um, you know, this is a nice space. This is a nice piano, and I love these guys. So, cool. Definitely a good spot to be on a Thursday morning. Sure, sure. Yeah, man. So what inspired you? To, I know you've been you've been uh, in this group or you started this group about, what, a year ago or so, or I'd say, or a little less than that? Well, I started the quartet about, a, yeah, about a, you know, um, like a half a year ago, maybe six, seven months. Um, but we didn't start playing really as a trio until we until really formally until this this year. Um, you know, early January, February, you know, we kind of, uh, we played studio together and yeah. uh, I don't know, I was kind of like, this is really cool. And um, we ended up being in a school ensemble together on coincidence um, as well. And so we kind of had a lot of time to gel and play together. And so that kind of made me feel like it's like, oh, why not just kind of make it a formal group and, you know, go and get some work for it, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it must, it's nice to, you know, handpick these guys and it kind of happened naturally right like you said you guys were in the same ensemble together yeah. but if you felt comfortable playing with one another that's always the best thing you know getting placed in an ensemble that the guys don't really gel but this is different you know this is a different case so yeah. i'm glad i'm glad that's working out um yeah I, I would also you know i might might have you guys play a little bit more first but um i don't know you guys planning on on recording at all uh, in the future yeah, I think so. I was um, I wasn't able to get a spot in a studio this uh, this school year, but I definitely next year we're we're planning on I'm planning on uh, releasing some kind of music with the quartet and definitely gonna have some trio tunes on that as well. So you know, Great. looking forward to that. You yeah, know, we'll look out for that. Look out for the Eric Stern either trio or quartet. Yeah, awesome. So uh, we'll we'll talk in a little bit. But what do you guys have planned for for the next tune? Uh, I think we're going to play uh, a tune called Desafinado in uh, Blake's mom. I think it's her, it's her birthday today. So uh, he wanted this on the set, and so it's going to happen. Happy birthday, so, Blake's happy birthday. mom. <laughs> Hope she's watching. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hello. Well, enjoy, let's enjoy uh, Desafinado. Thank you. 
Beautiful, guys. Yeah, I love those black chords, Eric. Yeah, man. It's a nice arrangement and orchestration of the melody. I really, yeah. Uh, so I was wondering, man, you know, you've been in Miami for two years or so now, because you're a sophomore. Um, how would you say the scene in Miami compares to where you grew up? You grew up in Brooklyn, right? New York. Yeah. What would you say the difference is between the two? It's interesting. I mean, it's because growing up, I, I did a bunch of the youth orchestras and different things that New York City had to offer. I was in um, Arturo O'Farrell's Afro-Latin Jazz Fat Cats Big Band and the New York City All-City Jazz Band and some other local groups like Brooklyn Youth Music Project and some others, um, as well as my high school band, Edward R. Murrow High School. Um, but I wasn't really on like the more adult scene. Um, and I think it's, it's interesting. I feel like um, in my time here, I feel like, um, you know, the, the, the people that come out of Frost, they, they have more, I think they get, I, I feel like there's more, it's, it's a little bit more active for the youth here. Whereas I think in New York, it's, it's just, there's so many people, there's so many more, it's more an adult scene that it's a little bit harder to squeeze in. But then again, that's also due to the fact that I haven't really tried to squeeze into that scene um, I'm planning to do that once I get home this summer, you know, and I think, you know, as, as I get older, I'm sure my opinions on that will change. But, um, you know, I mean, and COVID has been tough. Um, and it's, it's the, I think the, the other difference is here is that uh, you need a car here and in New York you don't. And so uh, I don't have a car yet. You know, maybe I'll get one, but I'm not sure. But these two guys, uh, Blake and Henry, are both getting cars. So that will make my life that's gonna, that's gonna uh, definitely out. easier next <laughs> year. Um, but I do, but I think that, um, it's still a good scene, you know, there's definitely work to be found and, um, you know, there's a lot of active pianists in the piano studio, so that's really nice to see and it's, it's definitely something to look up to, but, you know, both scenes are great, both have their upsides and downsides and, you know, I'm happy that I have the ability and the privilege to, you know, be in both and, you know, you know, grow in both, so. Yeah, absolutely, man. And you're gonna, I mean, you've already started working a little bit, but you'll, you know, you'll be here for two more years and, and the gigs will come for sure. And hopefully this group can play in a variety of different venues too and everything. But yeah, it's interesting to hear the comparison. I mean, I'm from New York too, so I know it's it's harder to break into that scene, but it seems like you're already starting to do that. So, I mean, you know, with time, with time, man. Uh, I, yeah, so we're, I think the next tune you guys are going to do before we take a break is is an original of yours, right? Mm -hmm. I was gonna. So you you probably do a lot of arranging and composing. Obviously, you do it at your instrument. That's what that's your that's what you do. You know, you do it on the spot. Um, yeah. Would you say like playing piano has helped you with composition a lot throughout your life? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, yeah, no, for sure. Just like because yeah, I mean, definitely a decent amount of my tunes. You know, sometimes I'll just be noodling and I'll like come up with a melody and then I'm like that's that's like a tune um and then sometimes I write you know when I arrange for the group um and I've arranged uh, some classical pieces and some just other pieces we'll play Scarborough Fair later that's like a folk tune mm. um you know yeah definitely being at the piano you know working out reharms um is is helpful um but yeah definitely definitely the piano is uh, instrumental in, in the way I'm in the way I'm composing at the moment so awesome well, looking yeah. forward to hearing. So what's the tune you guys are going to play to finish off the set here? Uh, we're going to play a tune called Enjoy It. Um, I wrote this. This was one of the first tunes I wrote, I think, at school. I wrote it for, like, a, a project in, um, in, a, in a theory class. And then Jacob Shapiro said, like, in piano studio, I didn't have a name for it. And Jacob Shapiro was just like, I just said, I hope you enjoy it. And then he was like, that's, that's the tune name. Enjoy it. <laughs> and I couldn't think of anything better. So here we are. Enjoy well, it. Is enjoy it. Tune. Hopefully so. you guys, you guys can do it in five minutes. Okay. Let's <laughs> try our best. Enjoy it. Try it. All right. Cool.
Enjoy it by Eric Stern. You've been listening to the Eric Stern Trio. We'll be right back after a short pause right here on WDNA's 88.9 FM. Miami-Dade County, under the leadership of Mayor Daniela Levine Cava, is moving swiftly to expand COVID-19 vaccine distribution to protect our community and move our economy forward. Vaccine supplies are currently extremely limited, and as the state provides more vaccines to the county, we are working hard to distribute them as fast as possible. Register for vaccine updates and get more information at miamidade.gov slash vaccine. Get vaccinated, Miami-Dade County. It's our best shot for a strong, healthy community. Welcome back to this edition of the UM Frost Jazz Hour right here on WDNA's 88.9 FM, the home of Sirius Jazz. If you're just tuning in now, we have been listening to the Eric Stern Trio's debut performance here at WDNA. And, um, you know, you're, you're in for a treat because we got about a half an hour more of some great music. Um, before we start, I, I wanted to, to talk with our, the drummer here, Mr. Henry Moore. What's happening, Henry? Doing well. Hey, good to see you, man. Great. So you, you've been on this show uh, before, or is this your first no, time? No, this is my first time. Oh, man, awesome. It's great to have you. You'll, you'll be doing many more of these, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, so, man, so you definitely seem to come out of the bebop school, which I respect because that's where kind of the school I come out of myself. Who are some of your favorite drummers from that era or just, you know, favorite drummers in, in general right now? Oh, man, from that era, um, I really, really listen to a lot of um, Philly Joe, of course. Um, Another one of my favorites from that era who's um, still playing is Roy Haynes. I just love his playing. Yeah. Yeah, Roy's, Roy's you know, a living legend indeed. I still need to see him live once, before, you know, while he's still gone, man. He, and he, I mean, yeah, it's true. And he's done everything from, you know, bebop to post-bop to electric, you know, and big yeah. toms, you know, all that crazy stuff. Yeah. So uh, cool, man. So you also did you did a lot of playing in high school, uh, like competitions and playing in big band. You, you did the essentially Ellington thing, I think, right in, yep. in high school. What were some takeaways from that? Did that kind of that competitive environment of being in New York City, competing with different high schools, and did that prepare you for the college environment? Would you feel? Um, yeah, I think it did. But what I took most from essentially Ellington wasn't the competitive environment. Um, they do. They really do a good job there of um, focusing on community and meeting new people and really learning about the music um, a lot more than the competition. That's great. I'm glad you said that, man. Because yeah, that's not really competitions. You have to find the because uh, you know music isn't really about competing in the end. It's about collaborating and meeting people and communicating with them through music. And yeah, I'm glad you had that experience. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also, you know, coming from a drummer to a drummer, um, you've played a little bit of big band here. I think you played in the XJB, yep. right? Um, how would you say, uh, I mean, do you prefer playing in big band or you, do you prefer playing in small group? And what are some of the differences, you think, between the um, two? In terms of what I prefer, I think I'm really still, now that I'm in college, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, in my high school experience, most of what I played was big band, so um, I really enjoyed that. But now that I've come here, I've gotten to experience a lot of other kinds of music and other kinds of um, groups, piano trios, um, yeah. quartets, quintets, a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think as a drummer, one of the main differences is um, in big band, you really have to um, take charge a lot more and really um, lead the band and really do a good job orchestrating um, in a very clear way. Whereas uh, with some of the small groups, you can be um, you can be a bit more um, loose with that and a bit more um, interactive and really taking in what everyone's doing and responding. Yeah. Exactly. I'm certainly hearing that with this group. You guys have a great sound together and everything. But thanks, Henry. Thanks for talking with yeah. us, man. All right. 
Um, so we'll continue with some more music. Eric, what do, what do we got next? Um, I think next we're going to play a tune called uh, I Loves You Porgy. I've been working on this tune, uh, solo piano, but uh, today we're going to do it with the trio. And I think awesome. uh, this is a staple of the Blake Aldridge Bill Evans songbook. Yeah. Absolutely loves it off of Waltz for Debbie. And uh, that's a great recording. Uh, and Keith Jarrett, who's a inf big influence of mine, he has a bunch of solo piano recordings of this that are very solid. So Great, man. Um, so we're going to do it. And, uh, you know, I think uh, we hope it hits home. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Cole Porter's I Loves You, Porgy.
Oof. That hit. That hit hard, man. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful rendition of I Loves You, Porgy. Um, yeah, I definitely heard a lot of the Bill Evans <laughs> version in there. Or just like that vibe. And that's great. Um, the next tune uh, that you all are going to play is a Scottish folk tune. Is that is that true? Um, that I guess was made famous by Simon and Garfunkel. Um, and this one's called uh, Scarborough Fair, right? What inspired this one? Um, well, I don't know. Nothing completely. I mean, I had always known this tune since a young, being a young kid. Just one of those like folk songs that you might sing with your family once or twice. Um, but I kind of got into the habit of arranging classical for us. And we didn't actually play a lot of those arrangements because a lot of them were for a quartet. But, um, you know, I've arranged them and I kind of was like, this is kind of along those lines. This, this is not a, it's a folk tune. It's not a classical tune, but, you know, it's a, it's a folk tune. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I just kind of said, um, I just kind of wanted to arrange it. And so I did for us. And um, I don't know. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a good arrangement of ours. It's a fun, it's a fun arrangement, you know. Um, cause I think it's, it's a challenge to, you know, keep the song authentic to its folk roots, but add the things about jazz that make it really interesting and cool and fun to listen to, you know, yeah. you know but not jazz it up too much sure. to the point that it, it kind of loses what the, the, the feeling of the song. Absolutely. You know? want to keep the, what the song is about in there always. You don't want to, want to hide that, but, mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to hearing this. So let's, uh, let's hear Scarborough Fair. You're listening to the Eric Stern Trio right here on WDNA. Uh, our viewers, next week we will have the Philip Capuzzi group here, right here at 11 a.m. on uh, the Frost Jazz Hour. And the week after we'll have Brian Dubrow's trio. He was with us last semester. He uh, did a, d a duo with Diego Melgar. Um, and then on May 13th we'll have Russ... Spiegel will be joining us, uh, a non, uh, or at least a, a non-Frost student. Russ is definitely a, an experienced jazz guitarist, so we'll hear him on May 13th. All right, without further ado, Scarborough Fair. Thank you. 
Man, what a cool arrangement. That was awesome. Woo. Scarborough Fair. Man, almost sounded like a new, like a new composition. It was so arranged. That's great. Um, we got about a minute left in the program. Um, so why don't y'all play play us out with some Stella? Stella by Starlight. And you've been listening to the Eric Stern Trio. Um, look out for these guys. Um, take over the scene. They sound great. I'm uh, happy to have them on the show. So thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you all next week on WDNA's 88.9 FM. Thank you.